greetings. I am white Wolf. Hello, my friend, a warm welcome to you, of course. I come to you now, as always, with a single intent, which is to offer my service, and in that I hope you will find the wisdom and the clarity and the reassurance and the inspiration and the healing and the love that is relevant to all who will listen. So tell me, dear friend, how can I serve you on this occasion? Always my greatest desire and intent to encourage, to uplift, to inspire, but maybe most of all, to comfort and to reassure. This is not only my most sacred intent, but the sacred intent of all who wish to communicate now from the world of light with our friends who are incarnated on earth and facing this time of momentous change, unlike anything they have ever been through. So all of you, dear friends, we could say are in a place without a map. And that sometimes seems a scary place to be. But when you're in a place without a map, the only thing you can do is to turn your eyes heavenward and allow yourself to be guided by the stars. Well, we are not stars, but we are part of a collective also, involved in the evolution of humanity, in the healing of the collective, in the awakening of the collective. And so we come now to you at this moment. So yes, what we see is happening. Many people in the situation of being in a place without a map feel themselves lacking the tools, the knowledge, the understanding, to be able to take back control of their lives. The fear and security people feel is because they're not in control. There's so much uncertainty. But when such a situation exists, what better time can there be than to remind yourselves of faith, of having trust, that this is something that has been programmed within your deepest knowing for as long as you've been in your present bodies, that this time would come. It's a shock to the system when it comes because suddenly your reality is turned upside down. But we want to remind you that you are reminded by your deepest knowing that this is part of the plan for you. And there is nothing to fear, it's easy for me to say. And when there is fear, then let your reflex be to go within and find the place within that is not a knowing fear, the place of you within you that is love. So what greater resource could you wish for than to be reminded and to know that within you is that sacred spot of fearlessness, of absolute faith and trust, of deep knowing that you have elected to be part of this movement, this transformation, this healing on planet Earth, to all in your own way, not only liberate yourself, but to liberate others by your example. What can there be to fear? Perhaps it's time for me to remind you that everything is love, including yourselves. When I come into the presence of any of my friends, that's all I see, love, connection, truth. And if there's fear, and don't judge the fear, it's all right to fear. Don't forget you are human. We don't forget you are human. So there's no reason for you to forget that you are human. But what you may call fear is a movement of energy activated by a change in your energy system, like the wind blowing through the trees. Allow the fear. Don't argue it out of the way. Don't try to rationalize it. Don't negotiate with it. Allow it. And to allow it is to love it. And by allowing your fear, it has no argument to fight against the present reality. So when you allow it, it can become quiet. It can join you in the trusting that all is well. This is not a time, dear friends, to be superhuman. This is not a time to be a saint. This is a time to be deliciously human. And allowing yourself to be deliciously human, you're preparing the ground by acceptance of all that is you to receive the divine light into you. 
that that light which then is one with you will play its part in the transformation. And I'm going to use a word that nobody ever likes to hear, and that is patience. It might not happen overnight, but there is coming a moment, a time, which can be definitely a turning point. And when this date arrives in the coming time, then as it has been celebrated for thousands of years, before there was any of the belief systems that you now have in your world, before there was any religions, there was this day that was celebrated and acknowledged and recognized and treated as the most sacred. And so on your solstice day, maybe a time to connect to the most ancient of times, the most ancient experience you have ever known on earth, the cradle of your human existence. And as then and now, to know yourself to be a part of that creation. Maybe in that way, you'll be able to free yourself of some of the conditioning that your belief systems have imposed upon you, from which your fears come. Many belief systems have served to separate you from the truth. It's created dualistic thinking. Beliefs in right and wrong and good and bad. In those most ancient of times, before any existed, these value systems did not exist. So maybe it's a beautiful time, dear friends, to imagine yourself back in the earliest times of your human existence, when you can celebrate your innocence, when you can feel and know and be reminded of the inseparability of you to all of creation. Even as recently as when I was incarnated in the human body of white boy. Amongst my people then, from the biggest buffalo to the smallest ant, from the biggest mountain to the smallest grain of sand, these were our relations. And that was a continuation of a relationship to all that is, that has existed long before any of your other belief systems were there. This is a way back to source a way back to the original self, a way back to the time before there was ever a need to create masks, layers, personas, defense mechanisms that would conceal the true you. Any of you possess in your home something that you call a dimmer switch and you turn it up and the light becomes brighter. That's the simplest way to describe what we perceive and what will happen. As you discover that within you, there is the capacity to let the spirit, the light which is you, shine more brightly. There have been many conditionings that have meant you've had to hide your light. But now you can't resist that process which is supported by the inflow of energy from the cosmos to allow the dimmer switch to be turned on full blast. And it's not because even that you're having a conscious intent to do so, it's something that's happening automatically. Just as when the sun, the warmth of the sun shines in your garden and the flowers begin to grow. So as the warmth of divine love that shines upon you comes into the earth plane, there's no way that those who are ready to do so can resist their growing as well, their increasing of their light bodies. So it's happening automatically. And so people are going through changes in their lives, things are happening, maybe which they would never have wanted to happen or the egos wouldn't have wanted to happen, but this is the effect of the light. This is the effect of the cooperation between the soul and the forces of light. 
And it's like your souls are saying, bring it on, God, bring it on. Meanwhile, your egos are saying, oh, no, I don't want change. Let things stay as they are. I'm frightened. Yeah. But it's happening. You can't resist it. And the more you do try to resist, the more painful it will be. Because it has to happen. Yes. So the down flow, the download of divine love, is awakening people to a capacity within themselves to experience love. But it's not even about being a loving human being. It's about dissolving even identification with the human self and feeling a part of one heart, a heart that never opens or closes because it doesn't have any movement. It just is love. And that's the movement from the personal to the transpersonal love. That's the movement from being a loving human being to a human being that is love. That's the movement from defining yourself, even with the words, the love that I am. The love that I am welcomes and greets you and the love that you are. This is what must happen, that all names, labels, definitions of difference and separation in the name of love, that they go and replaced in that experience of true oneness. And that's where freedom lies. There is no freedom in personalizing love. There is no freedom in even understanding the nature of the human heart, beautiful as it is, but which is something which can open and close. That's the human heart. What you are talking about and what you are hoping for is the divine heart, which lives in everything and you live in it. That doesn't mean to say you have to completely abandon your humanness. The human heart is beautiful for lots of functions. It's nice to fall in love, but it's with the human heart. But still, there needs to be the awareness of the real heart, which is the source, which is unchanging, unaffected by any external event. That is freedom. And it is in you. It's not something you have to reach or to gain. It's just reminding yourself it is you. It's in you, it is you, and you are in it. If there's one focus of reflection or contemplation, let it be just that. There's no how that I need to apply to this. There's no question I need to seek an answer to because it already is. This is awakening. This is the awakening. To become what you've truly always been. But that human self has sometimes concealed it. The layers of programming and conditioning have concealed it. And with that, with that feeling and realization comes the greatest gift of all, which is peace, and most specifically, peace of mind. Words don't say it. I hope those of my dear friends who are listening will feel even beyond what I am saying, what they are hearing and processing through their minds and their hearing systems, they will experience above all the space behind it, the vibration. The moment I would talk about these things, the mind becomes engaged. 
and the mind tries to understand and the mind will filter it through different levels of understanding and resistance, acceptance and so on. But love as a vibration cannot be resisted. How can love resist itself? And peace is all around. Peace is there whenever you wish to listen to it, in silence. Silence is the language of God. I would say to my friends, listen. And maybe out of that silence, you will hear the word of God speaking to you through your own highest and deepest knowing, which you will recognize as absolute truth. Put your attention on any part of your physical body, any limb, any organ, and it's at peace, it's silent. Go in nature and listen. Where does the sound of the bird come from? It comes out of silence. That is the language of God, the language of truth. If I was only to use human language to express it, well, those of my friends who are listening might have to plan to spend many, many hours sitting where they now are, if I was able to do justice to those subjects with words. And so you have the expression, the peace which passes all understanding. The mind doesn't understand peace. The mind doesn't understand love. And the mind will find its peace when you confront it with absolute truth. And it has nothing to say. It cannot react. There's nothing to contradict, nothing to analyze, nothing to doubt. That's the greatest silencer of the mind. Sometimes my friend will ask me, why will, how do I keep my mind quiet? It's so simple. Confront it with truth. Absolute truth. And the mind in its own way will bow down before absolute truth and will become its servant and your servant. And then the battle is won. I just want to remind my friends that when you hear of things that the human mind would judge as being not so good and not so easy and sad, look a little bit deeper and you will find grace operating in that event. Grace is operating everywhere. And if you can't find it immediately, then go even deeper until you find the grace, until you understand that grace is operating in every human life to bring that human to freedom and to realization of their oneness with perfect love and God. Everything is a grace. Even though the mind may rebel at the idea but what does the mind know? So my prayer is for all my friends at this time that they will awaken to the truth of grace operating in their lives, bringing them to the experience of true freedom and oneness and everlasting peace. Your love to you, I say God is in you, is one with you, peace be with you.